Hello everybody. Now I would like to continue on my final and third part of Myanmar Constitution 2008 critic. Now let's look at the power of Commander in Chief of the Defense Services in a state of emergency. Article 413B says the President may declare a military administrative order and confer the executive power and the judicial powers duty concerning community peace and tranquility and the prevalence of law and order on the Commander-in-Chief. Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services may exercise the said power and duty himself or empower to any suitable military authorities to exercise thereof. And in Article 418A, in the declaration of the state of emergency, President shall declare the transferring of legislative, executive, and judicial power to the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services, and all assemblies will be suspended and dissolved automatically. Article 419 says, During a state of emergency, the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services may exercise all the legislative power, executive power, and judicial power. The legislative power may be exercised either by himself or by a body including him. The executive power and the judicial power may be transferred to and exercised by an appropriate body and it has been formed or a suitable person. Therefore, the sovereign power of the state, legislature, executive and judicial will be conferred on the commander-in-chief of the defense services during a state of emergency. In Article 420 says, the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services may, during a state of emergency, restrict or suspend the fundamental right of the citizens. Therefore, the Commander-in-Chief can restrict the right of the citizen as he likes during a state of emergency. Worst of all, Article 432 says, during a state of emergency, all measures taken by the officials are valid. No legal action can be taken on such measure. With all these articles, Article 413B, Article 418A, 419, 420, 432, Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services is given the sovereign power of the state by the Constitution. He is even given the constitutional right to restrict the right of the citizen and the criminal acts of he and his official are regarded as legitimate measures during a state of emergency. We can now come to a conclusion that the National Defense and Security Council is the most powerful as a team and the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services is the most powerful as a person in accord with the Myanmar Constitution 2008. We will now continue on looking at the articles which are also derived from the basic principles. In Article 232b, Subsection 2, in order to appoint the Union Minister for Ministries of Defense, Home Affairs, and Border Affairs, the President shall obtain a list of suitable defense services personnel nominated by the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services. Again in Article 234b, to appoint the Deputy Minister for Ministries of Defense, Home Affairs, and Border Affairs, the President shall have a list of suitable Defense Services personnel nominated by the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services. Therefore, Ministers and Deputy Minister for Defense, Home Affairs and Border Affairs will be military personnel in accord with the Myanmar Constitution 2008. In addition to this, Article 232b, Subsection 3 and Article 234c, give opportunity to the President to appoint military personnel as Union Minister and Deputy Union Minister to other ministries. These articles are also extended by the Article 262A, Subsection 2 and 262J. They say, Chief Minister of the Region and State shall re request suitable milit military personnel for security and border affair responsibility from the Commander-in-Chief of the Defence Services. Article 262J also says the Chief Minister of that region or state can request military personnel from the Commander-in-Chief of the Defence Services for other ministry of region or states. And the Constitution 2008 will not disregard the self-administered division zone in terms of the key role of military personnel. 
in Article 2760, Subsection 2 says, Defense Services personnel nominated by the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services shall be assigned duty relating to security and border affairs in the leading bodies of those divisions or zones. Again, in Article 276i, Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Services shall assign duty to the one-fourth of the total number of members with the Defense Services personnel in the leading bodies of the self administer division so therefore it can clearly be seen that at the union level region or state level and the self-administered division or zone level military service military personnel will take all the key roles in accord with the constitution 2008 it is only the military regime that will rule the entire nation and now i would like to point out those basic principle which were written for the benefit of the military. Article 20b says that Defense Services has the right to independently administer and adjudicate all affairs of the armed forces. It means the Union Parliament is not given the right to administer the affairs of the armed forces. Asian Parliament and the puppet parliamentary representatives are obviously useless. In Article 20d it says the Defence Service has the right to, admi to administer for the participation of the entire people in the Union Security and Defence. Therefore, if the military want to recruit soldiers, it does not need to consult with any administrative body nor to submit the proposal to the Parliament. Article 20 F says, the Defence Services is mainly responsible for safeguarding the Constitution. The article allows the military to keep this constitution as long as they want. There is a huge difference between civil services personnel and the defense services personnel. In Article 26E, it is written, Civil services personnel shall be free from party politics. Back in line with Article 121J, defense services personnel are entitled to be elected as the representative of the people parliament. Again, Article 232J in subsection I say civil services personnel shall retire if selected as a union minister. But the military military personnel, Article 232J, subsection 2 says the defense services personnel who are appointed as a union minister or for the Ministry of Defense, the Home Affairs and Bora Affairs are not required to re to retire or resign. Article 32B also gives privilege to the military personnel. It says the union shall ensure disabled ex-defense services personnel a decent living and free vocational training. The rights of the citizen are restricted in Article 34 of the basic principle of the union. Article 34 says every citizen is equally entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess and practice religion subject to public order, morality or health and to the other provision of the constitution. The rights given are subject to many other things. There are no absolute human rights as are given in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 and in the European Convention on Human Rights 1953. I therefore would like to say Myanmar Constitution 2008 is the worst and the most biased written constitution on earth. It is only to make the military regime legitimate government and the, almost all the parliamentary representatives are puppet of the current military regime. I believe you enjoy all the three parts of my Myanmar Constitution 2008 critic. Thank you for all the support you have given for the prevalence of democracy in Myanmar, Palmer.